Welcome back to Squawk Box. Jenny I of the man credited with designing the iPhone uh, leaving Apple. And Josh Lipton joins us this morning uh, with some more of the details and reaction from the West Coast. Good morning. Morning, Andrew. And you know, listen, his departure does come at a critical time for this company. Just look at Apple's last earnings report. iPhone revenue dropped 17%. Even as services surged 16%. And new services we know are on the way from original programming to gaming. With even bigger questions on the horizon, what are Apple's ambitions in autonomous driving? Are augmented reality glasses really on the way is something? All of this change coming now without Johnny Ive as an employee. He is leaving later this year, though not totally gone. His new design firm will count Apple as a client, and he will continue to work with Apple on exclusive projects. Analysts, analysts I spoke to say this news wasn't a total surprise that in the last few years he has stepped back from his role. But lots of questions for investors this morning about that design team and leadership at the iPhone maker. A source confirming that two design veterans, Evans Hankey and Alan Dye, will now report to COO Jeff Williams. I'm told that they took over day to day management of the design team when Ives was focused on the company's new corporate. Campus down there in Cupertino. Becky, back to you. All right, uh, Josh, thank you very much. For more on the impact I've had and uh, where Apple goes from here, let's bring in Dan Primack. He is Axios business editor. And, and Dan, um, I have something of a legend, but what, what does this mean to Apple immediately? Uh, immediately, honestly, I don't think that much. I mean, I think it's obviously it's a big news story, right? As you say, he's a legend. He is kind of the the strongest link to Steve Jobs from the early days of kind of this version of Apple. But I don't think it means that much. As Josh just said, members of his team are sticking around kind of, and this has been a structured thing, right? He didn't leave suddenly. This has been planned. He's going to continue working with the company, you know, as, as a contractor. So I don't think it means that much. And as the services business grows, the bigger issue for Apple, and, and my colleague Ina Fried said this, isn't so much what the next product's going to look like. It's what it is. There's a story by John Gruber that uh, Walt Mossberg actually kind of pointed out and said, this is worth reading. So I took a look at it, and he's got an interesting take on a lot of this, too. He said that, honestly, um, Apple's product line is so far out that you're probably still going to be seeing Ive-inspired products for the next five years in the line. Far out. Yeah. <laughs> far yeah, out. And I think, and I think that's true. He, he's been working, right? He's still there, sort of. But again, as Josh said, for the last couple of years, he's primarily been focused on the headquarters and the campus, which you can see, right, if you look at that thing. So no one was concerned about this two weeks ago when he wasn't really that involved. What, uh, what happens next, and does it matter that Apple has not named a replacement for him at this point? I don't think so. I assume it's a matter of time. It, to be honest, that might just be a pure PR strategy, right? We want to give this guy's been very important to us. He's going to continue to be important to us kind of in this independent outside role. Give him his moment, which is yesterday, maybe announce something next week or the following month. Dan, what do you think? One of the things we're talking about, though, is the aesthetic of Apple, uh, the aesthetic of, of every device for a very, very long time has had a very particular aesthetic. When you looked at something, even though it was just a black slab, you knew it was an Apple device, even with it being off, whether or you look at a, a laptop or something else. As the company gets bigger, as the number of SKUs and product lines that it gets involved in uh, grows, how much does it risk actually starting to look much more just like an electronic consumer company? Well, I mean, it is an electronic consumer company, obviously, with, with a big software component now. But look, I, I think the eye of aesthetic is kind of set at Apple for a certain extent. And Andrew, when you talk about them getting into different SKUs and different products, on the hardware side, they aren't really, right? I mean, you know, you talk maybe about an AR glasses. You, you know, you talk maybe about a car, but we've been talking about that for years. Outside of the watch, which is really the only new product category they've entered since Steve Jobs' death, you know, that kind of looked like an Apple product. And again, these are Johnny Ive's people who are going to continue running this thing I think the Apple aesthetic is kind of set, and you'll continue to know whether that is an AR glass. But again, the big question is, can they have another hardware hit? Not so much what that hardware hit will look like. All right, Dan, I want to thank you for being with us today. It's always great to see you.